Good evening and uh, welcome to our uh, message tonight from the Word of God and uh, so good to be with you. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day though when um, I can stand uh, uh, in the pulpit on Sunday night and uh, preach again, but we're going to continue to pray for God's leadership, continue to pray for His guidance. Uh, we're going to ask you to do the same uh, as we continue to seek His will. Uh, and seek his way. Uh, it is, um, but it's it's wonderful that we have the opportunity um, and that we have the ability uh, to uh, come together tonight, uh, open up God's word, and and Lord just uh, uh just just open up God's word and and study and and let God speak to us. Uh, so that's what we're going to do this evening. Uh, it is um uh, good. Again, it's good to be with you. We do want to remember all of those that were mentioned um, this morning um, uh, in uh, in our prayer request uh, at church. So many that stand in need, Brother H.B. Uh, Strickland, we want to continue to remember Brother H.B. in his prayers. Gloria, Miss Flo, the whole family. Uh, is he still in the hospital? Brother Scott Westbrook, uh, we want to remember him. Um, of course, um. Nicole is still in the hospital also. Continue to remember her. Uh, as far as um, all of those that um, are, are battling cancer, uh, of course, you know, we always remember Miss Renee and uh, Cindy Weeks and Lynn Gentry, Nancy's co-workers. Uh, we had praises this morning. Um, Lynn Bledsoe uh, had a praise this morning. He was at church uh, after having a knee, knee replacement. And uh, that's just a testament to um, <clears throat> to the grace and the mercy of God and His mightiness uh, to be faithful. And that's what that's that that's who He is. He is a faithful God. Uh, and we just always want to remember that. Uh, we want to remember all of those: Miss Dora Stokes, uh, Mr. Daly, Miss Inez, uh, uh, Brother Earl Franks, and Miss Cindy. And, uh, Miss Doris Rogers, and there's just, like I said, the, the list is long, uh, and there's no way that I'm going to remember everybody tonight. So uh, we just need to pray one for another as a church. Uh, we need to be continually praying one for another, but uh, it's good to be with you. Good to be here. Uh, good to be able to join you this evening. We're going to be in the book of Acts this evening. Acts chapter 11 uh, is where the message is going to come from this, this evening, but into uh, the message, we're going to uh, take just a moment in prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity that we have, Lord, to come together. Lord, we may not be face to face. We not, may not be looking at one another personally, but Lord, we are still gathered as your children, Lord, and we're still gathered together to hear the word of God. And Lord, we pray your blessings to be upon the reading and expounding of your word. We thank you for this meet each and every need, and Lord, bless in such a mighty way. <clears throat> Lord, we just ask you now, Lord, as we open up your holy word, that Lord, you would feed our hearts and our souls, and Lord, you would bring us together. And Lord, I just, uh, again, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for uh, our church. Thank you for our church family. But Lord, most of all, thank you for loving us. Now lead us, guide us, and direct us. And we're going to give you all praise, honor, and glory. For it's in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, as I said, open your Bibles to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 11. Uh, we'll be dealing with the first one, first nine. Oh, sorry for the technical difficulties. We dropped out there for a minute. But anyway, uh, we're going to be dealing with the first um, nine verses. Uh, so uh, turn, open your Bibles. Um, and all right. All right. So in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 11, verse one, and the apostles and the brethren that were, were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up uh, to Jerusalem, uh, they that were of the circumcision contended with him saying, thou, wanted, thou wentest into men uncircumcised and did eat with them. It looks like we're going to have technical difficulties uh, uh, tonight. But anyway, um, sorry about that. Um, uh, but anyway, 
Um, back to the word of God. Um, here we go. Uh, verse four says, but Peter, Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it uh, by order unto them saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. A vessel descended as, as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came even to me upon the which when I had uh, fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and the fowls of the air. Uh, I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, all not thou common. Um, so we see in these verses of scripture uh, this evening, we see that um, that the now here the apostle is, he's dealing with division. Um, and the thing is, is that I think we can all agree that we live in a world that is divided, um, that there's a lot of things that the world is divided on today. But we're never to be divided on the word of God. We're never to be divided as Christians, as believers. Uh, the apostle was being ridiculed by the Jews, uh, the Christian Jews, because uh, they found out that he had been eating and um, uh, that he had been sitting and eating and dining with the Gentiles. Uh, and he, verse four says that he had revert, rehearsed the matter. So in other words, he answered to their charge. Um, he says to them, he says, no, he says, when I was in the city of Joppa, when I was there, I was praying um, and the thing is, is that that's the, that's the first thing we do. That's the first place we go to brothers and sisters is that we continue to pray. We're always to be praying, praying without ceasing. Um, he said he was in the city of Joppa praying, uh, and he fell into a trance and he said, I saw a vision. Now, the thing about this vision is, is that this is the way that, um, this is God's expectation of us today. You see, the thing is, is that just because we're Christians, uh, we were once sinners. Uh, the, the thing that separates us from other sinners in the world, those that have not accepted Christ, is that we're saved by grace, that, that we've accepted the grace, the mercy, and the love of Jesus Christ. We've repented of our sins. Um, that's what separates us. Uh, but other than that, um, we're all sinners. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Uh, so uh, we 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 have to always remember that it's God's grace and His mercy uh, that have saved us. Uh, the Apostle Paul was being ridiculed uh, because you see the thing is is that they the 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 Jewish Christians felt that they were the chosen that that Gentiles were unworthy of of the gospel or unworthy of knowing God. Um, but that's not, that's not, that's not so for God. So loved the world. Uh, that's the way it works. He loves all of us. He loves all of mankind. He loves each and every one of us. Uh, there is nobody in this world that God does not love. Christ died for all. He died so that everyone could have an opportunity. Everyone would have the opportunity to choose. And so Peter says, well, let me tell you what happened. Before you judge me or before you ridicule me or before you persecute me too much, let me tell you what transpired. Let me tell you what happened. Sometimes, sometimes we just need to step back and say, let me explain it to you. Um, that's uh, Sometimes we just need it. We need to have it explained to us, uh, so to speak. Uh, he says, let me explain what happened. He said, I was, I was here. Uh, I was in a trance and uh, I saw a vision and, and a certain vessel descended. He said, I saw it descend from heaven uh, as it was a great sheet. And it was let down from heaven by the four corners. Now in your mind, can you picture that? Can you see in your mind what Peter is describing as God's fixing to make an example? He's fixing to, to demonstrate to Peter 
um, that uh, there's no division. That for what, as I said this morning, is one of my favorite, uh, for what the Lord sets free is free indeed. So if he sets me free, it doesn't matter whether I'm Jew or Gentile, I'm free. It doesn't matter anymore in God's eyes if we are children of God and we believe in Jesus Christ, then um, uh, we're, um, we're free. We're his children. Uh, and that's, uh, to me, that's the good news. I mean, Peter could have got down on himself. Peter could have defended himself. Peter could have said, oh, no, you know, I'm, 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 we're not even going to do this. But he didn't. He said, let me explain to you. Let me explain it to you. You see, in our life, a lot of times, that's what we need. We need to just slow down and we need to explain it. Um, life is moving so fast right now in, in the world that we live in that we don't, um, we don't take a whole lot of time to stop. We don't take a whole lot of time to stop and to explain uh, the gospel. But, um, but yet at the same time, um, it's important that we do. Because you see, we need to study, we need to know the word of God so that we can, uh, that we can share, that we can share his love and, and share his grace and his mercy. That's, that's what we're here for. We're not here for anything else other than to share the gospel, to share the love of God um, with those around us. And uh, we, we should be, we should take that time to share it. But anyway, so he says, here it is. He says, I saw this as it were a sheet uh, tied by the four corners, let down from heaven. Uh, and it came even to me. He said, it came before me. Uh, it came before me and upon, in, in verse six says, upon the which when I had fastened my eyes, he said, when I saw it, when I looked at it, when I looked in it, when I looked to see, he said, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. Peter said, I saw the very things that in the book of Leviticus in the Old Testament that were deemed to be unclean. They were deemed to be unclean. And, and, and the thing that, that is important here is the illustration that God is making is that if God says, if God says it's good, who are me and you? Who are we to dispute it or to change it or to, or, 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 or to contradict it? Who are we to second guess God? We're nobody. We are the creation. We don't second guess the creator. If God says it's good, then praise God, it is good. Amen. I mean, this is this is this is what this is what Peter is is saying, and 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 he says in verse seven, and he heard a voice saying unto me. He Peter says, I heard a voice from heaven say, "Slay and eat." He says, in other words, take eat, take eat. And Peter said, No, no, Lord. Um, it would be one of those things where, um, um, well, it's like getting the slice of chocolate cake when you're on a diet. Um, it looks good and you say no. And somebody says, well, one slice won't hurt you. <laughs> right? <laughs> no. Um, no. Peter says, no, I've, I've never eaten this. He said, no, Lord, nothing like this has ever crossed my lips. Nothing like this have I ever eaten before. I've never eaten of anything that the scripture that you deemed unclean. I have not ever done that. The key is, the key is, is that we live our lives based by the word of God. God sets the rules. Well, his illustration to Peter was, was Peter, 
I know that you think that the Gentiles are unclean. They're uncircumcised. I know that that's what you believe. I know that's what the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, I know that's what they teach. I know that's what they teach. But I'm telling you, he said, I'm telling you, Peter, and, and, and we need to take it to ourselves also, church, that we were chosen by God. God loves us and he loves each and every one, every person in this world. It doesn't matter who they are. We are not their judge. We're not their judge. God is. We are to share the gospel. Now, I have to, I have to, when I say that, I have to be careful because I have to go ahead and make sure that I um, make the statement that uh, I, I don't accept sin. I said this morning that sin is sin. I call sin, sin, because I love those. I love people. I don't want to see anybody stand in judgment of God. I call sin, sin, because I love, not because I hate, not because I'm judging. That's the key. I'm not here to condemn nobody. I don't have the authority. But when God says, what I've cleaned up is clean. So for those Gentiles, for the, for the Gentiles that Peter had been meeting with and speaking with that had accepted, because when you look at, when you look at the, the first view, the first verse, you notice that it says, uh, and the apostle and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. You see, they had received, the Gentiles had received. So what, what, what God wanted under Peter to understand was that um, they were just as set free as he was. They were just as saved as he was. They were just as much the children of God as he was. It doesn't matter what our background is. If God sets us free from our sins, then we're free. It doesn't matter uh, anything about us. If God has washed and cleansed us, we are free. We're clean. For what God cleanses is clean, was his point. Peter says, no, I've, I've never eaten anything like that. And the illustration goes on. Uh, because in verse nine, God says once again to him from heaven, as Peter is explaining, what God hath cleansed, what God has cleansed. That's the key. That's the key, brothers and sisters, because you see uh, the, the, uh, the Pharisees were, uh, were rebuked one time because of they dressed up nice. They could put on really nice clothes. They could clean up the outside real good. But Jesus's point was, if you don't clean up the inside, the outside doesn't make any difference. If the inside, and his illustration was, if, you got, if you're going to clean the saucer, if you're going to clean the cup, you clean the inside of the cup. If you don't clean the inside of the cup, then the outside of the cup is not clean. It doesn't matter what you put on or how you dress. If the inside is not clean, if the inside's not clean, then none of it's clean. And that was his point. What God hath cleansed, he told Peter, he says, don't you dare call common. If I tell you, God said to Peter, if I tell you it's clean, then you count it clean. And you see, and the thing is, is that these are the encouraging words is that, that, that what God does set free, what God does clean up is cleansed. It's cleaned up. And that's, that's the wonderful, wonderful word of who God is. He used that word again, apostle, messenger, even for Peter. You see, the thing is, is that we should never look at anybody as being unworthy of God's love. Because you see, uh, in reality, 
There's none of us that are worthy of his love. Absolutely none of us that are worthy. But yet he still loves us. Yet he still loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. I said this morning that all I wanted to do in my life, the only thing that I that my desire was is to serve God, serve him well. That somebody, just somebody might increase their walk, grow closer to Christ. That should be the desire of all believers. That should be the desire of all of us. Because you see, we're none of us. God says he's not a respecter of persons. He doesn't love me any more than he loves any of you. He loves us the same. He loves us equal. The blood on the cross was not, the blood from the cross, the blood from the crucifixion was not given more to one than it was the other. It was given to all mankind. It was, it was given to all the world. God says, let me show you, Peter. Because see, I know that, that, that this is called unclean. But I'm telling you that if I say eat, if I say it's clean, then it's clean. You see, his point is, is we're nobody's judge. We're nobody's, man, we're nobody's judge and we, we don't condemn, we can't condemn. And brothers and sisters, what we are called to do is to love one another. What we are called to do is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. What we are called to do is to, um, well, walk through this life one day at a time, one moment at a time, sharing the gospel, telling people about Jesus. If you want to be set free, if you want to know Jesus, then you can. Let him cleanse you. Let him clean you. And then nobody can call you unclean. If you've been cleaned by God, then no one, I mean absolutely no one, can call you unclean. That's good news. That's the good news of the gospel. That's the good news of who Jesus Christ is. That's the good news. You see, it doesn't matter what the world says. We're children of God. We're his children. And may God bless us each and every day, everywhere we go, every moment of every day. And may we be a blessing unto others. Continue to pray one for another. Continue to pray. Um, uh, continue to pray each and every day uh, that God will open our eyes and that he will show us. He'll show us direction. He'll show us which the way to go. Because you see, right now, we're in a whole lot of uncharted, un, un, well, unknown territory. But God's still able. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. And you know what? There are still people in this world today that are coming to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that is, um, that's the key. I said this morning that all of heaven rejoices all of heaven rejoices when just one soul comes to know the Savior. And so we just pray now for each and every one, for all of those that have tuned in, all of those that have watched. Again, apologies for the technical difficulties, but we don't have much control over that. But anyway, we do pray. We pray for you. You're in my prayers. It's again, it's always good to be with you. It's always good to share the word of God. We live in a world that is divided, but the body of Christ cannot be, should not be, and will not be divided. We are united as one body because Christ is one. He's one with the Father as he's one with us. Go out and tell somebody this, this week. Go out and share that if God sets them free, they're free. If he cleans them up, 
they're clean. Glory be to God. Praises be to his name. Praises to the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we ask you now to lead us, guide us, and direct us through this upcoming week. Lord, may you and you alone be magnified and glorified. Lord, we just ask for your guidance. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for all that you teach us in your holy word. Now, Lord, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. May God bless you. Again, it's been good to be back. It's been good. It's been a good day. Uh, I'm looking forward to um, this coming week and more study time uh, and more preparation time and looking forward to uh, getting back to uh, the Word of God uh, on a steady basis. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he watch over you. We love you uh, and we're praying for you. God bless.